here on Weekend Edition, but Australian politics, a challenging week for the federal government. Will the opposition stand in the way of proposed changes to tax cuts? Joining me now is former Howard Government Minister, of course, and Bondi Partner Senior Advisor Peter McGowan. Peter, the PM, there was a movie called Risky Business. This is Risky Business. Um, exactly. He's taken the biggest risk of his political life and he broke a promise and he will pay a political price, Tim. It's just a question... To what extent? Mm. And it allowed the prime, uh, the leader of the opposition, Peter Dutton, to call him a liar. And nobody disagreed. He did lie. Uh, but he's gambling, as you suggest, that the benefit uh, to a, a large number of people will outweigh those who have lost out by him reneging on his commitment for stage three, the tax cuts, and it helps get him out of the hole of cost of living. I heard an analyst on Kieran's program, my brother, yesterday, and he said promises, political promises. It's a real problem if you promise a bridge and you don't build it. But if you break a promise where more people are going to benefit, which it looks from the outside looking in, more people are going to get tax cuts, is that as big a problem? Look, it's not as big a problem. It's clever. And uh, I was with Kieran Gilbert uh, early in the week and I, I suggested that don't underestimate the Prime Minister. He's cunning. Um, and that's proven to be the case. However, Tim, you can't so blatantly break a promise and not think people are going to think less of you, mm. and it will feed into a perception. Remember, he's broken a promise on the superannuation. Again, for people who've got $3 million or more, he's broken the promises of uh, saving $247 per household. And then there's the policy he's issues. Not, he's not Robinson Crusoe. He's not Robinson Crusoe. Politicians. I agree. <laughs> I agree, but... The secret of success is mm. to elevate yourself ab above yeah. the, the rank of ordinary politician. Nobody succeeded to date except for John <laughs> Howard. <laughs> what about Peter Dutton saying, let's do an election right now? Hyperbola, but it, he should. He's got to ramp it up. How, mm. how, this is a gift to an opposition leader. Mm. And if you play it right. If you play it right, and he will oppose the Albanese watering down of the stage three tax cuts through the parliament, mm. I would expect. Yeah, it's a fair bit of water to go under the bridge. There is, but the polls mm. will soon tell us whether or not... How much damage? Yeah. I, I I will concede this won't bring down Albanese, but it could be a substantial undermining of him and a characterisation of him in the public's eye that he can't shake in the next year or two. Yeah, it does play to everything that you said at the back end of last year. You said this first six months is all about cost of living. It's all about that middle Australia that is under pressure, is struggling and, and struggling to pay the most simple things that we yeah. would consider. Uh, so but he shouldn't be in yeah. this deeper hole. Mm. Every Prime Minister, every government is, is underwater on the issue of cost of living, Tim, around yeah. the world, mm. but not as deep as this government. He was asleep at the wheel. The referendum probably didn't help, did it? Correct. OK, Scott Morrison says goodbye. Yeah, look... Um, History is very uncurrent hist mm. historical assessments of him, especially by commentators and academics, let alone his political opponents, have been very unkind. I think history will be kinder to him. Um, I, he, he, he was politically outplayed by the premiers do during the pandemic, no question about that. But there were many things he did to save lives that were that others around the world could not achieve. There's the Quad, made up of Japan, America. Uh, India and Australia to counter China. He got that up and running. AUKUS has transformed our relationship mm. uh, with the uh, United Kingdom and the and the US. He did go to he did go to Hawaii and oh, gave yeah. himself a few jobs. Yeah, it's, it's some, it's, some, that'll some, that'll stain his. That will stain it. And the five mm. ministries. Oh yes, mm. that's why he's a relatively. Uh, unpopular or regarded as relatively unsuccessful Prime Minister at the moment. But I think as time passes and there's more objective and rational assessment of him, um, I think you'll find he was a good Prime Minister. Neo-Nazis in balaclavas uh, spruiking all sorts of bile doesn't do anything to help those that want to change the date of Australia Day, does it? Um, ag agreed. But they're a sideshow, Tim. There's only a handful of them. They're pathetic they're despicable, and the police are tracking them well. Um, Australia Day went relatively well, I would have thought, yesterday, because most Australians got about the celebration if they wanted to mm. or have a re relaxing day or a sporting day. There were large crowds in all the cities, and the Invasion Day uh, 
uh, advocates linked it to the Palestinian cause. Uh, it'll be interesting to see whether that continues in years to come. So the, um, there was, if you like, um, just a, a regurgitation of existing positions. Yeah. The majority of Australians love their country, value everything it gives them, and will celebrate Australia Day quietly and uh, unobtrusively.